uh, thank you all for being here with us this morning. Uh, Mr. Crittenbrink, you brought up the subject of fentanyl precursors. So that's one of the questions that I wanted to delve into this morning. I certainly don't have to talk about the uh, crisis that we're experiencing in this country with, with uh, fentanyl, um, which obviously harms the lives of so many people across the country, whether large urban areas or small rural communities. Um, I certainly believe that we need to crack down on this problem. And it must, so I, I'm, I just want to ask what the administration is doing to address this apparent um, indifference, in fact, denial by China that they are engaged in this, uh, in the production and distribution of the precursors of fentanyl. Uh, what are you considering doing uh, as far as actions, whether it be on the uh, entity list in exchange for cooperation? Uh, you know, we're doing several things in, in Congress, uh, but, and it's so one of the reasons we have you here is, is as a resource. We wanted to ask what, what more could Congress do to help um, uh, the administration in this role to fight back on this issue? Congressman, thank you. Agree with everything you said. This is a national crisis. This is the, uh, as, as you well know, this is the leading cause of death, as I understand it, for Americans under 50 now. Um, I, would, I would highlight three things that we're doing to crack down on this. One, we are taking punitive actions and sanctions against those firms, including just in the last few weeks uh, against Chinese firms uh, who knowingly are exporting precursor chemicals uh, to be synthesized uh, into uh, opioids. Uh, secondly, uh, we are uh, working to build an international coalition of like-minded countries to cooperate, to crack down uh, on the flow of these chemicals. And Secretary Blinken just, I believe it was uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, held a large meeting with almost 90 countries to um, get at this question. Unfortunately, the PRC did not attend that meeting despite being invited. Uh, and thirdly, uh, we are uh, engaging the Chinese uh, aggressively uh, to demand that, take, that they take steps uh, to crack down on the flow of these chemicals. We have proven in the past, China has proven in the past, that when it wants to, it can take steps. It did uh, schedule fentanyl several years ago. That led to a dramatic drop uh, in the flow of fentanyl out of China. The problem now, of course, is that companies are exporting the precursor chemicals and then they're synthesized uh, elsewhere. Uh, we're going to continue to pursue all those lines of effort, but we've been very direct and candid uh, with the Chinese on this point. We're going to take steps to protect ourselves. Uh, if we can't, if the Chinese will not work with us to make progress, we'll take the steps we think necessary uh, to protect ourselves. Thank you very much, and I look forward to, uh, I'll take this as an opportunity to continue working with you on, on I'd be this honored question. to do that, sir. The, the, the other thing I wanted to delve into just a little bit in the short amount of time we have is, has to do with agriculture and, and the biotechnology uh, issues uh, that China is using for both military applications as well as human rights abuses. Recently, we, uh, some of the members of, of this committee, as well as others, have introduced legislation to expand the authority of CFIUS, the Council on Foreign Investment, to, to address some of these issues, which I think, would, if enacted, uh, would authorize larger jurisdictions uh, over land purchases by foreign military adversaries in our country. Uh, so, just real quickly, my question has to do with uh, um, uh, the, these authorities. Uh, um, do you believe that these are providing these authorities are, are, will be effective? Can we do more? Should we be doing more? Um, uh, are there other factors that we should be considering in, the, in this effort to get a handle on foreign purchases of agricultural land in the United States by adversaries? And I address that to either uh, Mr. Ratner, Dr. Ratner, or Ms. Kemba. Congressman, we, uh, I appreciate that question. We um, do participate in the CFIUS process along with, along with the other agencies represented here. We, um, this is certainly something that we're tracking and, and paying a great deal of attention to. I, I think we need to refer you to the Department of the Treasury um, uh, for, for further detail on, on how they are looking at the question of agricultural land in the CFIUS process. But we certainly are, are eager to, to work with you and your team on this and, and better understand uh, the issues facing, facing your constituents and, and others across the country. Dr. Ratner, any response? Congressman, I'll just say, uh, have to take a closer look at the specific legislation, but absolutely support efforts to prevent uh, adversarial ownership of sensitive land industries and sectors, and, and biotechnology is one 
worth taking a careful look at. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Ms. Connors recognizes.